Hey everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 12, episode 7, Allegation Aggravation. All right, last week was a to be continued, so of course, as per usual, we are picking up right where we left off with episode 6, and it's the bro dinner. Bill has left in a huff. Frank goes running after him to try to get him to come back. Everyone wants him to come back, with the exception of Evan, who said, go on, get lost. To a vampire? Careful, Evan. You are a mere mortal. You don't know what he's capable of. So anyway, Frank catches up with Bill outside, and Bill's like, I'm done. Jennifer is not the one that came up with the rumor that Evan was cheating. That was Teresa. Hmm? And he said, you know, but like Jennifer's the one who's getting blamed for it all. And he thinks that's ridiculous. Side note, it is just Bill and Frank right now. This would be the perfect opportunity for Frank to say, hey, by the way, why did you tell your wife after you and I had dinner that I said I knew who the woman was that Evan was cheating with? Because I don't even think Evan is cheating. So why would you say that? Or it's the perfect opportunity for Bill to say, hey, why are you lying about that? You and I both know you told me you knew exactly who the girl was that Evan was with. So what are you lying about it for? You know, because one of them is lying. But of course, no, we don't get any of that. None of the investigative journalism that I want in my Housewives shows. We need Megan King Edmonds. That woman poured over documents to discover that Brooks was lying about cancer, and I appreciate her efforts. Anyway, long story short, Frank can't get Bill to return to the table. Meanwhile, at the table, Joe B says, I bet you any amount of money Bill's not coming back in. And, of course, he was right. Frank comes back, sits down, and he's like, you know, if it was any of your wives, you would have done the same thing. You would have defended them. Which, I mean, you know, it's true. So now they're doing shots, and somebody notices that Louie's not there yet. And they're like, hey, is Louie coming? But just then, Louie walks up, and I swear to you guys, I can smell his cologne from here. Like, seriously, doesn't he look like the kind of guy that just really slathers himself in, like, Axe body spray or something? <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but somehow I just know it. So now all the guys are filling in Louie on why he just missed Bill. Joe Gorga said, uh, you know, Evan here had some allegations against him last year. And basically, Jennifer was uh, digging up dirt on him. And Evan goes, and I just called him out. So Joe says, yeah, he stormed out. I mean, you were there. You saw what happened that night. I mean, you stayed with them, which I'm kind of shocked that you did. And Louie goes, I'm sorry. And Frank's like, come on, bro. He's got a bro. He can't go against his girlfriend, bro. Okay, so, you know, Louis just sat down and his phone's ringing and already it's Teresa. Making sure he doesn't talk. He just got there. Oh my God, she is so afraid he's going to say something. And the guys, of course, are all ribbing him about, you know, oh, being on a short leash and your girlfriend's calling already and stuff. And he goes, listen, I, I know what you guys think about Teresa. I know you think she yells at me all the time and, you know, she's wild and crazy. Uh, no, I don't think that. I think you probably yell at her if she, you know, pees in the house. Anyway, Louie's like, but she's amazing. You know, I, I met her at a time when I least expected to meet a girl. So anyway, Louie's backstory is he got divorced at 36 and he's 47 now. And Joe goes, have you had a past? <laughs> what? No, I have had no past. I was born the day I met your sister. Joe's like, uh, you know, because these guys brought up some stuff they saw on social media. Louie goes, uh, yeah, you know, I had a couple bad relationships. But, you know, I mean, all of us would probably have a girlfriend or two that would talk bad about us now. Okay. Dude, there's a difference between talking bad about you and saying that you hit her in front of her children. And Tiki goes, listen, you know, we read all this stuff. And what should we think about it? Like, should we ask you about it? And Louie said, you can ask me anything. Oh, Teresa. <laughs> I think you're going to wish you were here. Anyway, Tiki said, you know, I only really have one question, and it's about physical violence. And then Louis, of course, gives his signature confused look. Physical violence? Yeah, bro. 
Willie goes, there's, there's no physical violence, just a couple of thirsty exes looking for attention. And Tiki goes, hey, listen, man, I default to, like, believe you, but what am I supposed to tell my wife when she's reading all this stuff? You know, she's going to ask me about it. Louie, let me tell you a little secret. Go on. Teresa, you're going to want to be here for this. That girl that you're referring to, I heard a rumor that she stabbed her husband with a butcher knife. What? Okay, what? Where did you people come from? But I love that I heard a rumor. Yeah. Yeah, did you hear about my axe? She stabbed her husband at the gym. Crazy. This is like Dateline stuff. Oh my God, you guys. Side note. Tangent, I just finished The Thing About Pam. I think they're replaying it on Hulu. So good. So good. Renee Zellweger plays Pam. I'll tell you what. She is an amazing actress who is not afraid to take on a role that, you know, doesn't make her look so pretty. I loved every minute of it. I was glued to it. And Dateline is going to have like a follow up, like the real Pam. And like, I can't wait for that. That's coming like next week or something. So good. Total wackadoo. You got to watch it. It's definitely worth it. Anyway, yeah, you know, Louie with the rumors and Teresa with the rumors. <sighs> you know, they really are perfect for each other. If you could just get her to stop chewing on his slippers, you know, how's she going to learn? Okay, what? So it turns out this rumor happened while Louie was still with her. So it's not like a recent rumor. Joe Gorga's like, and you didn't run? Good question, Joe. Louie goes, mm, no, I didn't want to believe it. Joe B has a look on his face like, what the f***? I hope I can remember all this from Arch. In Frank's confessional, he's like, violence is unacceptable in any relationship. And you know, just the way Louis gave his ex the benefit of the doubt, we should give him the benefit of the doubt. Really? That's your takeaway? Okay. Joe Gorga, did you get close to engaged to her? And Louis goes, yeah. And Joe goes, why? <laughs> yes, again, very reasonable question. Louis goes, I don't know. I was stupid. I, I, I wasn't strong in this. Cut to Joe Gorga's confessional. He's like... This is a little weird, but Teresa made up her mind that this is the one, and if I want to stay in her life, I'm keeping my mouth shut. You can see on the faces of the other guys, like Evan and Joe B and Tiki, like, they think Louie's odd. Like, they know he's odd. Louie, <laughs> if you thought that was odd, Louie said, you know, meeting Teresa, I got to the point where I was like, finally, this is the one. <laughs> really? I mean, I think your picker is still off, maybe. So Joe says to him, look, there's a lot of stuff out there about you. So I say to my sister, does he treat you right? And she said, yes. But if you ever fuck up, I'm going to hear about it. Trust me. And then they do a toast to Louie. And by the way, Louie's not afraid of you, Joe. He's living with Teresa Gorga Judice Soprano. You think you scare him? So the next morning, all the guys are hurting from too much drinking, except Evan. Evan went to work out, but Louie threw up twice. And now all the significant others are getting the scoop on what happened at boys' night. Joe B is telling Margaret that Tiki just came right out and asked Louie about the allegations and how allegedly his ex stabbed her ex-husband, current husband at the time, I don't know, with a butcher knife. So, you know... There's that story. God. But when Joe tells Margaret that, without even stopping for a second to seem shocked by that news, she says, what does that have to do with anything? Um, maybe nothing, but it's quite a story, isn't it? Are you at least going to react to it? Anyway, Joe's like, well, you know, he was trying to deflect. And Margaret goes, yeah, this guy's slick. Discredit the victim. I mean, she's not wrong, right? Knowing that crazy story about her does make it a little less believable when she says that Louie hit her in front of her kids. I mean, I, I do still believe her. Evan, oh God. Evan thinks that Louie's a nice guy that had a couple of girlfriends that just didn't work out. 
Yeah, I'll say. Jackie goes, I don't know. I don't like this discrediting everything to vengeful exes. Melissa, she stabbed someone? Thank you. Thank you, Melissa Gorga, for having a reaction to that. And she's like, so basically he's saying she's lying. And Joe goes, yeah, and she's crazy. They both realize that Louis is going to be their brother-in-law someday. Maybe sooner than they think. So they... Both believe that they just need to side with him. Meanwhile, Teresa is grilling Louis. Uh, when Tiki asked you that, what did he say? Uh, something like his wife was asking questions. Teresa, why was his wife asking questions? Oh boy, that's all she needed to hear. She already hates Tracy for telling her how she should have her own brother's back. So yeah, Teresa's like, why was his wife asking questions? I don't even know her. Teresa in her confessional. First, she's getting involved with my family. Now she's using her husband to do detective work? <laughs> like, back the f*** up. Okay, she should be using Megan King Edmonds. She was never better than when she investigated Brooks. So Teresa's like, I got a bad taste in my mouth. And Louie's like, no, it's fine. He didn't say anything wrong. And Teresa goes, don't worry. Louie's like, I'm not worried. I'll protect you. <laughs> I want to protect our love bubble. Please don't say love bubble again. So finally, at Margaret's house, she asks Joe, did Bill ever show up? And Joe B goes, so Bill did come, but then Joe Gorga starts going on about how Jen fights dirty, and then Evan got mad. And Margaret goes, I can see why Evan was mad. Jennifer was digging. Joe goes, and then he said, your wife is a bad person. And Margaret goes, at Evan and Jackie's, he tells Jackie that he's not sorry about what he said to Bill. He's like, I've never even done anything mean to Jennifer. Jackie agrees and thinks that Evan had every right to say that. And he, she's like, well, where do you stand with Bill now? And Evan's like, oh, listen, I don't take back what I said, but I, I mean, I think there's a way for us to reconcile. Jackie's like, I don't think Bill is the bad guy here. It's his wife. His wife is a disaster. I mean, that may be, but you know... I don't think Bill's a good guy either. So at Bill and Jennifer's house, this is a little throwaway scene. I just have to mention it because Olivia gets a new bike with training wheels and she's very scared to ride it. And she's like, I'm not ever going to take these training wheels off. And then in the next scene, she's like cliff diving into the pool. I couldn't believe she was afraid of the bicycle. Oh God. She's an enigma wrapped in a mystery covered in donuts. So anyway, Bill and Jennifer are talking about Guy's night, and he explains why he came home early. Jen said she's sorry she put him in a bad position, but she is glad that he had her back, and like she's never heard him defend her before. She's like, I, I get that you don't want to be confrontational, but your silence is like frustrating. Bill, look, I'm an imperfect human being or any kind of human being. Side note, is Bill all right? Why is he letting his hair grow free and wild like this? It's like he's given up on the afterlife. Next, we're at Dolores' house with her kids, and I guess Frank has gotten enough work done that they can move back home into the house. They were staying at her townhouse with her. Frankie's so sweet. He's like, how you doing, Ma? And Dolores goes, oh, I'm okay. I'm just trying not to worry about Nana. And Frankie goes, oh, don't even get me started about Nana. I'm just trying to block it out of my head. I guess David has been a huge help with her mom, you know, having to have that triple bypass surgery. Dolores is like, of course. He's there, as always, for my family. Gabby says she talks to him every day. Every day? I don't talk to my husband every day, and we live in the same house. Oh, God. Now we're at Jennifer's house, and the Queen Olivia is doing Jennifer's makeup. Or she's putting on, like, blush, and she goes, a casual look. So cute. Jennifer goes, oh, that looks good. I would hire you in a second. Then we cut to Margaret and Lexi at Margaret's house, and she calls up Dolores to see how she's doing and how Valerie is doing. So, I mean, of course, the whole family is worried and upset. Margaret would like to plan a spa day, particularly for Dolores, because she thinks she needs to pamper herself. And Dolores goes, oh, let me tell you, I'm used to doing everything for myself. So having you do this for me, I'm uncomfortable. I feel bad. You guys don't have to do this. And Margaret's like, oh, please, Dolores, you've got to accept things when people love you. But um, as long as I have you on the phone, 
I don't think I'm going to invite Jennifer. I don't think this would be the day for everyone to feel tension. And Dolores agrees. Yeah, I don't need the stress or aggravation. And for those playing along, there is the aggravation part of the title. You know, I always, I'm just a total nerd about this, but like when I see the title of the episode, I always want to like find out where it fit in. And of course the allegation part came early because that was at the guy's dinner when they kept talking about Louie's allegations and Evan's allegations. And now Dolores says, I don't need the aggravation. I don't know if this is my OCD or what, but every time I watch Ozark, I have to pause it on the logo because I have to like figure everything out. I'm really going off on a huge tangent here. I'm sorry, guys. But ever since I found out that that logo spells Ozark, I've been obsessed with it. So it's like everything is in the circle. The circle is the O. And then the four images are Z-A-R-K. And those pictures that are loosely like in the shape of the letters will also appear somewhere in that episode. So like if the R looks like a pistol or something, you'll, you'll see that in the episode. Well, that could be any episode of Ozark. But like, I don't know, like if there's a utility knife that's opened up so it looks like a Z kind of, then there will be a scene where someone's like cutting rope with a utility knife. It, I, it's just so dumb, but it's like, I'm obsessed with it. It really must be OCD. I can't stop myself. I don't know. Anywho, Dolores doesn't need the aggravation. Next at Teresa's house, she is getting ready for something. But holy hell, look at all that makeup. Damn, girl, you only have one face. Well, two at the most. So Gabriella, my new favorite Judice girl, and Gia walk into her bathroom and they're talking in their comatose way that they talk, very monotone, very unexcited about anything. Teresa asks them, have you guys been on Instagram? And Gia's like, no, why? Teresa, you know what today is? Gia and Gabriella together. Your one year anniversary. Teresa, yeah. So they talk about how fast the year has gone. And Gia says, you know, as you know, I was very skeptical at first. Teresa, yeah, because of the things you are hearing. Listen. He had past relationships that weren't good. You can't listen to all that. I mean, look at me. I went away. And G goes, yeah, but you didn't do anything. And she goes, I know. You know, honestly, Teresa makes a good point here. Louis's family may not be exactly happy that he's dating an ex-con, you know? So then Teresa says to the girls, listen, you know I'm smart, right? Gia's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so she tells the girls that, you know, she really loves Louie, and they're like, we know, and she said he makes her very happy. In Gia's confessional, she's like, honestly, my family has been through so much. Then we get the montage. Here she comes, my bitch wife. She's such a I'll smack your head up against the wall, so shut up. She's not wrong. And then Teresa starts crying. And they're like, what's wrong with you? Like, if you're happy, why are you crying? And she goes, I just really believe my parents sent him to me. Are her parents mad at her? I'm just saying, couldn't her parents have sent her a guy who... I don't know, wasn't training her to be a service animal. Anyway, she's like, I asked my parents to send me someone. You know, maybe they felt rushed. Maybe Louie was the best they could do on short notice. She's at the Jersey Shore, and he was walking into his house as she was walking by. Maybe they were just like, okay, the first guy they saw was Louie. So Gabriella said, you did ask them? And Teresa nods, and she goes, and then that week was when I met Louie. Do you guys believe that? Gabriella, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> They all start laughing, and Teresa goes, I'm serious. Like, if you guys ever need something, just ask them. 
<laughs> yeah, don't come to me with your problems. Ask your grandparents. Side note, just going off the premise that they brought Louie to her, I would be very explicit when I asked them for something. You know, like leave no room for interpretation. Teresa goes, have you tried it? It works. And Gabriella goes, uh, no, I'm not 40 and single. Sorry. <laughs> And also, they manifested Louie, so let's keep things in perspective. They might be good, but they're not great. Next, we are at Melissa's house, and she is in the kitchen with Joey and Antonia, who, let's just say her level of enthusiasm um, is matched to Gia and Gabriella's. Melissa's making breakfast, and Antonia goes, Can you make Taylor ham? And Melissa goes, What? Antonia, Taylor Ham! <laughs> oh, God. So anyway, Melissa's making egg sandwiches. She makes a fried egg, I guess. And Antonia goes, I don't like that kind of egg. Give it to Joey. He'll eat it. Wow. Teenagers, they're delightful. So Melissa starts asking Antonia how she wants to celebrate her sweet 16. In her confessional, Melissa tells us that she didn't have a sweet 16 party because her dad got killed in a car accident the year she turned 16, and she just remembers being sad. Breaks my heart. So Antonia is going through a lot, and... Being 15 years old, that's just like compounded tenfold. She had to switch to a new high school when they moved. She tore her ACL and she can't cheer anymore. And she's just like having a hard time with it all. Melissa said, you know, the doctor said you can start doing cheer again. And she said, no, it doesn't matter what the doctor said. I know I can't and I don't want to. And it's... Yeah, I mean, I hope that Melissa and Joe are keeping a close eye on her because I feel like this is the kind of turning point where things could go very wrong for a teenager. Okay, next we see Teresa, and she's all gussied up for her date with Louie, her one-year anniversary date. Louie planned the whole thing so she doesn't know what they're doing or where they're going. Teresa shows Gia what she bought Louie, and it's a tennis bracelet? Oh, okay, no. It's a hair tie with diamonds on it. Much better. Okay, so Louis sent a driver to pick her up, and he, he takes her to this dock, and she's walking along the pier. There's, like, rose petals everywhere, and there's a guy there to welcome her onto the boat, and there's a saxophone player on the boat. She and Louis are now sitting at a little table on the boat, and the wind's blowing, and the sax player is blowing, and... I I can't think of anything more uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, so Teresa tells the saxophone player that she used to play sax in elementary school. And the guy's like, what, what kind? And she goes, alto. And I know that they're called the reed. And I know how to put my tongue. And then she's like, yeah, j just there, like, like here. Yeah, like, like this. Of course, her hands are in the wrong <laughs> position. <laughs> I very, very badly want to see a clip of little Teresa playing saxophone, though. I feel like I might have liked her then. So after that, then she gives him the hair tie and she said, read the card. So he's reading the card that she wrote to him out loud. And she says, it's making me cry. Your own words are moving you? <laughs> okay. So Louis said, well, I have a card for you, too. And then he makes the saxophone player go fetch it. I'm sure that guy was like, um, you're paying me to play the sax. No, he's probably like, I'm stuck on this boat with you guys for I don't know how long. So, yeah, I'm happy to have something to do other than just sit here and look at you, too. Oh, my God, you guys. This card is so big that it requires the saxophone player to hold one side of it. Okay, so Louis says, I was trying to write 20 things of why I love you. Things? You mean reasons? Oh, ick. I can already see the second one is you love so good, and I'm feeling queasy. And I'm not even on the boat. Imagine the saxophone player, that poor guy. Oh, it gets better. He's not only reading it aloud to her when it's right there, but he's pointing to each word as he's reading it. 
Oh my God, guys, do you think that Louie thinks Teresa can't read? I mean, I kind of understand, but anyway, this thing is a giant scroll that's like eight feet long and he's just going on and on and on. You're strong. You're fierce. You fetch the newspaper every morning. Then he says, and I hand to God, this is true. I love your voice. Teresa. (laughs) Oh my God. Is this a dream or is this really happening? Oh, it's happening. Okay, now I think this is a prank because now Louis is reading, your bashfulness and authenticity is one of your most beautiful qualities. Come on. You're pranking us, right? Bashful? Teresa Judai Soprano. Bashful. Have you been saying stuff behind my back? It's not going to be good. Blink, blink. (laughs) I will say this, though. Joe Judice, the inventor of the dildo, would never have done something like this for her. Like, ever. Ever since we've known him, he never acted like he even liked her. So, you know, I'm happy for her a little bit that this, like, super chuggy guy is just exactly what she's always craved, maybe. I mean, honestly, this whole cheese ball cliche romantic evening is, like, probably exactly what she loves. And yeah, it makes her happy. I mean, when she's not being scolded for having an accident. As Louis gets near the end of his scroll card, you can start to see the discomfort on the saxophone player's face. I mean, this guy already had to sit through you're an amazing lover and kisser. So he's like, I'm done. I'll swim home. Okay, now it's spa day for Dolores. All the ladies arrive one by one. When Teresa gets there, she tells them all about the scroll card. Teresa, he loves my honesty. <laughs> In Margaret's confessional, he loves her honesty or her delusion that she'll believe everything he has to say. When Teresa goes to get changed, the other ladies that are there start talking about men's night. Well, Margaret brings it up. And about Jennifer's digging. And someone's like, yes, she should apologize. And Teresa walks up, who should apologize? Tracy. Jennifer about the digging. And Teresa goes, yeah, I called her to see if she was coming today. And she didn't know anything about it. And I looked at the thread and I'm like, oh, yeah, she's not on it. Of course, you didn't realize she wasn't invited before you called, right? Margaret said, well, because no one's really talking to her. She kicked us out of her house the last time we saw her. Teresa doesn't like that Tracy has an opinion about anything, really. Dolores arrives last, and the ladies are asking her about Valerie, her mom, and I guess she can't be left alone ever at all, and poor Dolores has been, like, sleeping there with her. She tells everyone that David has been to every one of her appointments with her, and then Jackie, Teresa, and Dolores go off for their services. I guess they're getting, like, massages or something. So it's Melissa, Margaret, and Tracy who are left, and um, Melissa tells them about Antonia and, you know, how she's getting her worried now. So I am at, at least glad that it seems like Melissa is taking it seriously, you know? Then the ladies switch places and those three go to have their treatments done and the other three are just hanging out by the pool. So Teresa says to Dolores and Jackie, what do you guys think of Tracy? And they're both like, oh, I like her. She seems really nice. Eh, wrong. I'm sorry, the answer we were looking for is she's a nosy bitch. We would also have accepted she butts in where she doesn't belong. So Teresa goes, I think she's a bit much. She's very into everybody's business. So as we all know, Teresa didn't like that Tiki was asking Louie questions that night. And she blames Tracy for that, which ordinarily I would agree it's usually not the guy who comes up with this on his own, you know. It's like trying to get information for his wife or whatever. But I think Tiki was genuinely shocked about the hitting his girlfriend in front of her kids. And I think he honestly thought Joe should be concerned about it for his sister. Tracy and Margaret are getting their massages in the same room, and Tracy asks Margaret, do you think that Teresa knows about Guy's Night? 
And Margaret said, I don't know. When she came in, she was all happy, which kind of surprised me. Out by the pool, Jackie's kind of trying to defend Tracy a little bit, but Teresa doesn't even like that Tracy has an opinion about Jennifer. Teresa, she doesn't even know Jennifer. Then she says, Margaret comes after people too. Just as Margaret and Tracy are walking up, Margaret, what are you guys talking about? Jennifer again? The problem with her is she takes it to the next level. And Teresa goes, but you said that about her husband to try and hurt her. And Margaret goes, no, I didn't. Margaret explains that she was not trying to hurt Jennifer. She was calling her out for being a hypocrite. Dolores, Jennifer is very, very hurt. She's eviscerated. She buried it, and it's not something she ever wanted to have brought up in her face again. Dolores does agree that Jennifer is hypocritical, but that Margaret really opened up a wound and that one of them's going to have to bend if they're ever going to, like, make peace again. Moving on, Jennifer and her brother Stephen are having a coffee together. They talk about how happy their mom is in Turkey, probably because Bravo's not filming there. It was a rough season for Josephine last year. Is that her name? Josephine, I think. Stephen asked Jennifer if she told their mom about the affair, and she said, "Mm mm-hmm. Stephen goes, you did? Over the phone? How'd she take it? Jennifer goes, she was cursing out Margaret, like, we're going to get her back. Stephen goes, was she mad at Bill? Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Jennifer said, I think in some part of her Middle Eastern brain, she thinks that men will just do that sometimes. It's okay. Side note, I am completely reminded how much I like Stephen. And why doesn't Jennifer hang out with him more? He's like, how are you doing? And she does kind of start to cry a little bit. She tears up and he goes, it's tough, I know. Stephen, Gabby, and Queen Olivia are my favorite members of her family. She should film with those three all the time. Anyway, what's going on is that Jennifer is dealing with all these feelings that she should have dealt with 10 years ago when she first found out about the affair. Stephen asks her, well, how are you and Bill now? And she goes, I honestly don't know. And he said, why? And she said, because we haven't talked about it. When Bill gets uncomfortable, he doesn't like to speak. He's not willing to go to a therapist either. Then Jennifer says something kind of shocking, at least to me. Um, She said that she's afraid that if they go to a therapist, it will open Pandora's box and they won't be able to close it. I mean, that kind of says it all right there, doesn't it? I think she's afraid that there's probably a lot more she doesn't know about that went on. She admits that she is angry at Bill and she's hurt and she wants him to care. She said, at this point in my marriage, I'm suffering and I don't want to end up like mom. In her confessional, she said that she doesn't think it's fair for anybody to have to stay in a marriage when they're not happy. And she's questioning it. And that is where we end this episode. Kind of sad. I can imagine that it would be hard for her to like revisit all this when she had it stuffed down for so long. But also remember you guys that I said, we're blaming Margaret for bringing this out in the open. But really two years ago, Margaret brought it out in the open and it was just squashed by her denial, right? Jennifer just denied, 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 and then deflected by saying, you know, you're mother and you sleep around and all that. So why she didn't do it again? I don't know. I think the reason she owned up to it this time really doesn't have anything to do with Margaret. Maybe she thinks something else is going on now. I'm not sure, but I do think that she kind of was tired of keeping the secret, you know? I think maybe she was feeling like her marriage wasn't a give and take. And maybe she was starting to question, why am I keeping his secret? The kids are older now. We can tell the older ones. I don't know. What do you guys think? Why do you think Jennifer admitted it when she could have just, like she did two years ago, denied that he was having an affair? Maybe there was a third option there that she got a heads up that this news story was going to come out. Let me know what you guys think. If you liked this recap, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. If you click on the bell, you will get notifications every time I have a new video. That's it for me. I'll see you next time with the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Bye.